What's up everybody, it's Man of Low Moral Fiber here. My name's Luke, and in this video we're going to be taking another look at the Seeker as a part of my Does It Suck series. The Seeker is a Seraph Rarity Torg Assault Rifle from the 4th Campaign DLC, Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep. Like many other weapons, it did receive a significant boost as a part of the community patch, which is why we're going to be taking another look at it. We're going to start here by looking at the unpatched version of the weapon and then apply the patch to see how the weapon has changed. This version here is the wild prefix, which does give it a slightly increased damage and fire rate, I believe, and it does come at the cost of accuracy. However, on the Seeker, that's not that big a deal because obviously the bullets are guided. The name would imply that, and the red text says, oh, yeah, that's fair. So let's go ahead and take a look at how those projectiles perform real quick. Shooting over at this enemy, I'll shoot over top of him. And you can see that it started to go in there and it's actually hitting that little railing right in front of him. Now this version here is the one without boosted projectile speed and we do have another one here, the slippery version, that does have boosted projectile speed. You can see that it has a slightly higher accuracy and a lower damage. So we're going to switch on over to that one now and you can see that the bullets move a lot quicker and they zoom in as well. What I have noticed is that when using the projectile speed one, you're actually giving the bullet less time to actually arc in on the enemies. And so because of that, I'm going to be using the version that has a little bit slower projectile, which may make it a little bit more difficult to hit some really far enemies. But up close, I think it will actually help us out. One thing that you can definitely notice about this weapon is that it is incapable of getting critical hits. It does outpace the health damage or the health uh, regeneration here and the damage reduction at overpower level 8, but it barely does that. You can see it's taking multiple magazines here in order to kill this guy. You can see that each round or each shot is costing me two rounds of ammunition, so definitely something that requires a lot of reloads here to kill one junk loader. Now, granted we weren't using slag or the action skill, but this is kind of to give you a feel for the weapon's potency without other boost. Obviously I still am built out for a skill tree, but you can kind of see that it is fairly weak. I do believe we are using an explosive relic there too, and that was with the legendary soldier comm. And you can see that it just took quite a few rounds to kill that enemy. Now, if we compare this weapon here to a regular purple nasty rifle, this is going to be a Torg Assault rifle with one of the Vladoff barrel variants, the same one that the Seeker is kind of built off of, we can see that it looks like it's going to be a lot better than the Nasty Rifle, right? The damage is like close to four times as high. Granted, the fire rate's lower, but you would expect it to be really, really good. Let's see how a standard purple would have fared against that guy, and then we'll go ahead and apply the patch. But just to kind of give you a feel for how underperforming the Seeker is without the patch, let's take a look at how it compares to just a regular old purple real quick. So here's our enemy. Try not to get him slagged with that slag barrel. But you can see right away that we're dealing damage quicker. And one of the reasons why we are dealing damage quicker is because a normal Torg Assault Rifle is actually able to get critical hit damage. So, um, probably going to die to this guy because <laughs> he's got a good gun and we haven't been able to shoot off his arm. But you can see that the Seeker was significantly worse than non-unique variants. You know, um, now that we've shot off that guy's arm, we shouldn't be able to die to him. And I would say that it overall took less time to kill him with this purple weapon here than it did to kill him with the Seraph weapon. And so that's definitely a little bit disappointing for the Seraph weapon here, the Seeker. This is obviously a weapon that existed as soon as Borderlands 2 came out. And this one came quite a while into its life cycle, you know, with the fourth campaign DLC. Everyone was expecting it to be pretty good, you know, um, or wanted it to be pretty good, I would imagine. But the fact that it doesn't get grenade damage buffs and it doesn't get critical hits made this weapon really underwhelming. I kind of like the idea of it. I think it's kind of neat that the bullets will home in on an enemy. So I hope that the, um, the community patch is going to make it a lot better. I'm going to throw on a rock rifle here so that we can compare to what the gemstone difference will be after the buff for the Seeker. Um, it looks like the Seeker right now is doing approximately 1.86 or 1.87 million damage, and it has a fire rate of 1.5. So let's go ahead and quit out and apply that patch. The patch notes for the Seeker say that its damage has been buffed by 200%, and its fire rate has been doubled as well. 
So I would expect to see a fire rate of three on the card now, which is obviously going to make this weapon a lot better. 3.4, so huge fire rate increase there. And we can also see that the damage is up near 2.3 million now. So that's pretty cool there. We're going to see how it works. Um, we'll also notice that it no longer says it consumes two ammo per shot on the card. So because Torque Assault Rifles were boosted as far as their ammo consumption goes, we will not be using as much ammo with this weapon, which is obviously beneficial. Beyond that, it has a much higher fire rate. The base damage has been significantly increased. So it'll be interesting to see how it compares now to a purple rifle. I hope it will be better than a standard purple now, but I'm not sure how it will compare overall to a gemstone variant, the rock rifle here. This is obviously with the base damage accessory, not the one that also lowers accuracy and raises fire rate. So yeah, a little bit of a unfair comparison because they don't have the same accessory, but yeah, we'll see how they compare in use. Um, I didn't really mean to throw my uh, deal there, so we'll go ahead and get rid of that. And again, on this first guy, we're not going to use slag or the turret, and we're just going to see how it does. So already I can see that this weapon fires so much quicker. Um, we don't really have to worry about missing too badly with it because it should adjust for us, so we can kind of shoot this guy around. We have to be a little bit helpful to it. You can't just aim in the wrong direction and hope that the Seeker's ability will make up for it. You still have to aim a little bit close to him. But you can see, like, obviously right away there, it killed that guy so much quicker than it had in the past. So that's pretty cool. We're going to go ahead and move forward and see if things are different now for it. Um, I would expect that they are, you know. That's a huge DPS boost that the weapon got. Um, have to reload it half as often now. Uh, you know, the damage is much, much higher, and overall, <laughs> it's just much better. Fires a lot quicker and everything else, and, you know, when we have Metal Storm now, because of that fire rate boost, Metal Storm's going to be pretty crazy with it, because it's going to fire way, way, way quicker than we were used to before. So that's pretty awesome. I still don't think it gets grenade damage boost, which would obviously help this weapon with Axton, but wouldn't benefit it as much on other characters. Now, I've heard that this weapon can be really beneficial for Gage when she has a high amount of anarchy, and that was even before the community patch. So I would assume that with the community patch, even though Gage isn't anywhere near one of the characters that I find fun to play because of the accuracy reduction. I do understand that this would be a pretty promising weapon for Gage because its special effect is going to counteract Gage's anarchy, reducing your accuracy. So that's pretty cool there. Worked through that first room with relatively no issues. I had more issues with those stairs there than I did with the actual enemies. So the weapon is looking pretty solid right now. I knew that the Seeker would need a significant buff in order to like be a viable or you know weapon that people would want to use um, but now it it got more than a significant buff I mean you don't even really have to aim that intently and it's still going to kill enemies very very quickly so that's pretty cool there I'm going to throw a couple grenades here just because I threw so many in the first room that I want to stock up a little bit got down to four grenades because I think that will encourage these chests to have more grenade ammo drops and so now we're up to 10 grenades pretty good that's as much as a standard character can carry without a stockpile relic so pretty cool so that guy he's got slag now we're just going to release all of our rounds from way over here that should be enough to kill him i would imagine we'll throw a few more oh maybe it wasn't enough to kill him one thing I've noticed with this weapon is that it seems to make enemies retreat more than a common weapon. I don't know if that is just kind of a placebo effect that I'm experiencing here, but eh, interesting. Also, I've noticed that uh, this weapon is not great for taking out barrels because your bullets will probably go to other enemies. Now, I do think it's good for power loaders because I don't think they can reflect it at all. The fact that it can't get critical hits is still going to be underwhelming compared to some rifles that you could be a little bit more precise with, but there are enemies where it is very difficult to get critical hits on, such as stalkers and some other stuff, and so this might be a really good weapon for them. Definitely has enough potency to easily blow up the exploders before they get close to you, even though you can't really blow up their limbs and disable them, because this weapon cannot get critical hits. Against a non-slagged exploder here, granted we do have Onslaught and Metal Storm, 
we are able to run away and finish him off. So that's pretty cool. I do like this weapon's new fire rate when uh, combined with Metal Storm. I think that it is beautiful, <laughs> you know, just to watch all of those rockets fly out of there. Plus, you get a way deeper magazine size now as well uh, because... I guess the magazine size is the same size, but since the shots take less ammunition, you get effectively a much larger magazine, and that's awesome. One thing that was kind of cool about that situation there is that there were two enemies kind of grouped up with one another, and I originally had started firing intending to kill the first one, and he died, and then the rounds readjusted and moved on to the second enemy. That's a pretty cool effect there. I liked that. This is a very strong weapon at this point. I mean... This guy's way over there, and we're just going to lay into him and see if it finishes him off. Looks like it is going to take two mags here, but still pretty solid. We are low on grenades at this point. I am going to run back here and just open two more boxes. I could be switching more to a slag pimp and slagging these guys, but I've been having fun just watching this weapon put out what seems like endless rounds at times. Used to, this weapon had a problem with ammo consumption, and now it definitely does not have that problem. So that's really, really cool there. Taking a look at Metal Storm, we can see that Metal Storm is a significant DPS boost to Axton, if I can remember where it is here. So you can see that it's fire rate plus 60%. And so if this weapon didn't get a fire rate boost, that 60% only boosting a 1.5 fire rate it would give us, you know, some, it'd give us a little bit extra, but since they increase the fire rate here, that 60% multiplying 3.4 is going to give us a much larger boost. And so I feel like this weapon is much more synergetic with Metal Storm now, especially since that also takes away the recoil. I think that's pretty sweet. Go ahead and get rid of that guy. Metal Storm will get activated. And then you can see how quickly we're putting those rounds down range. And because the recoil is almost all taken out, even though this weapon doesn't have a super high accuracy, they all seem to be in one little line. And then watching them all turn and hit the enemy at once, that's pretty cool. It's a neat little effect. So this enemy's pretty far back here. This is one of the situations where maybe we should be using the faster one. But even without the bullet speed accessory, it still did very, very well. Go ahead and uh, get Metal Storm activated again. Hopefully find a slagged enemy. Yeah, that's beautiful. I guess with this weapon, one of the things you'll want to do is, as you're getting close to killing one enemy, is start positioning yourself so that the rounds may be able to turn and move towards the next enemy as well. Because obviously with this weapon, you're going to have some rounds in the air unless you're timing it just perfectly to not overkill these enemies. You're still going to have some rounds in the air when enemies die. But when you have two enemies that were grouped up like those two were there, it's very, very nice that the rounds will turn and move to the second enemy. That's a neat little feature. Even without Metal Storm, the increased fire rate is just really, really nice for this weapon. Cool. Without Slag again, we had Metal Storm for a little bit there. But without slag, it looks like a magazine is going to almost deplete an entire power loader. That's pretty solid. With Metal Storm and Onslaught, a <laughs> magazine's going to take them out, you know, without slag at all. So that's pretty cool there. Let's go ahead and take out uh, Pervy and his friends. What I'm going to do in this room is throw the turret up top and then throw a couple slag grenades down below and then just really release a ton of rounds. Since I'm so far back, I would expect some of these rounds to curve and hit what we're trying to hit, but it didn't look like they were, so we'll have to be a little bit more accurate with it. Huh. So it looks like none of these were actually hitting Pervy. Or maybe Pervy is dead. I see loot up there, so he must have died somehow. Never mind. I was confused. Wow. This weapon, I mean, you barely even have to aim, and it, it wrecks things. There's no doubt about it. That is pretty cool see if pervy dropped anything for us here no bad touch this time from the little feller but let's go see the big feller maybe he'll drop a special item for us go ahead and let the transfusions head on over to this guy and then we'll release this whole mag maybe not even the whole mag seven rounds and it was able to kill him that's crazy this is a very very strong weapon now i quite like it 
Now, when there are no enemies around, this weapon is still not a super great barrel destroyer because it's not perfectly accurate. There are versions of it that are more accurate, but obviously I'm choosing the one that has the slight decrease in accuracy because that's a stat that its special effect totally makes up for. So with that in mind, um, I don't think that's a huge deal. You can always switch to another weapon to blow up barrels, or you can just kind of play YOLO and not worry about it. So I don't know. It's really up to you. All right. So um, before my shield breaks entirely here on this guy, I want to release an entire mag. And I did get a mag out, so we'll finish that guy, and we'll find where the next one is. Perfect. Alright, I am going to pick this up now, so that we can hopefully have it back for Hurley. And this will be an interesting situation to see if we can kill an enemy that we totally can't even see. That's pretty cool. That guy was all the way around that rock to the point where I don't think I could see any of his body. And the bullets still were able to curve around that rock and actually finish him off. Let's see if we can get something similar on Hurley here and actually kill him without looking at him. Now, I think we're going to be able to because he's such a massive target. So I'm just going to start firing these rounds and hopefully um, we'll see them curve to him and hit him. Now, a couple of them were curving too quickly and hitting that uh, little wall there. So I'm going to aim even further to the side. And now we are actually hitting him without really seeing too much of him. Obviously, we can still see him through the chain link here. Bummer. So it's a little bit difficult. We have to scoot up kind of close to get the, the real curve that I want there. But it seems to actually be dealing damage to him. There we go. Now we're actually dealing more damage. So maybe it's not as good as turning as I thought it was because obviously we're doing a lot more damage when we can actually see him. So... Maybe a little bit more practice required in order to determine exactly how much the bullets will bend for me. But, you know, it does all right. Here's another Midnight Star. That's pretty cool. We've recently taken a look at the Midnight Star. And it's actually usable now instead of just killing the user with, you know, no way to avoid that. So that's pretty cool about the Midnight Star. A lot of good gear for Axton here in the community patch, which I like quite a bit. Axton is probably... I don't know. I would say he's pretty much tied with Maya. I Maybe I like Maya a little bit more, but it's negligibly more. Maya and Axton, I would say, are tied for my second favorite character in Borderlands 2. They're both real fun to play as. All right, so we'll throw this way down there, and then we'll just see all of these rounds go over to that enemy and kill it while we can't really see it. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, so yeah, the Seeker's quite solid now. I do want to take a look at what a rock rifle does against a uh, against the first enemy there without the slag and bonuses and stuff. Just to kind of see if this weapon is, you know, quicker than a rock rifle at this point. So I'm going to do that real quick after we check this chest. Looks like one purple shield here, a Nova shield. I just want to see what the rock rifle will do. That way I'll have kind of a... You know, something to base the Seeker's raid off of. But running through the Washburn Refinery there, the Seeker did more than admirably. Um, didn't mean to throw that there. The Seeker did way, way more than I was actually expecting it to do. So, um, I don't know. A weapon that can get critical hits, though. I mean, there's something to be said for that because you can disable enemies and stuff like that. So, I don't know. Yeah, I would say that the Seeker is a little bit better than a gemstone rifle, which is, that's good. <laughs> that's real good. Um, this weapon's still pretty powerful. The fact that it can get critical hits is nice. Um, helps to disable some enemies and everything, but I think it really goes to show that the Seeker went from being worse than an ordinary purple before the patch to being better than a buffed gemstone version of it after the patch. And so the Seeker is quite gnarly now. Obviously, on a character like Zero, where you're you know, getting a lot of your DPS from critical hit damage, it's going to be terrible for that. Um, but on Axton, or probably a lot of other characters where you can get damage boosts that are you know, to base gun damage and some other stuff as well, this weapon is going to be pretty solid. Like I said, I think I heard that it's really good with Gage as well. One thing that I don't think we've covered on yet is that you can actually deal damage to yourself with the Seeker. Um, if I come here to this wall, you can see that I, you know, did some damage to myself there. I'll wait for my shield to come back up, 
and did some more damage to myself. So the weapon can hurt you even after the community patch, but I don't think it's so so dangerous that you would need to wear a manly man shield or anything like that. You just have to pay a little bit of attention to it. Don't shoot at a wall or a rail right in front of your face, and you're going to be just fine. This thing's gnarly. Um, <laughs> you just kind of throw the rounds out there, and it gets the job done. That's pretty cool. So this guy's way over there. Let's throw these rounds way over there and see if they're able to finish him off. Can't even see him here, but I know he's slagged because I saw those numbers come out. <laughs> and we finished him off without seeing him. I quite like the Seeker now. I think it's really fun. I know that it still doesn't get grenade damage boost, so it could be so much better. But it's really cool. I like it. I like the fact that it's, you know, it's fun to use with Metal Storm. I guess we could be using it with uh, Onslaught as well and like be running at enemies after we kill them. But, meh. It's pretty cool. I like it, you know? Throwing those rounds out there and watching them zoom in on the enemies is pretty solid. Um, does it suck regarding the Seeker after the community patch? Absolutely not. This weapon's quite a monster. I like it a lot, so I'd recommend you give it a shot if you didn't like it beforehand and haven't tried it yet. As always, guys, I thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you haven't yet taken the time to subscribe, please do so. I'd appreciate that as well. Otherwise, I do hope to catch you next time. Is the grenade really that tiny on Axton? I've never noticed that before. It's a very tiny grenade. When you throw it, it looks larger than that. Whatever. <laughs> One more time, guys. Thanks for watching, and I do hope to catch you next time. Bye, guys.